For Cream and Media's Polity, I am Lungile Ngompe. Joining me today is author and retired civil engineer, David Easton, here to discuss his latest book titled, A Good Damn Book, author's 50 years experience in dam construction. Can you tell us about your entry into the field of dam construction in 1965? What were your initial impressions of the vast scale of construction projects in South Africa during this time? Thank you for asking. I had no dam experience in uh, England when I arrived here in 65. So I joined a firm to assist in the management generally and found that they were actively in, engaged in dam construction in Zimbabwe. So I soon picked up the trend of what was going on in that regard. And uh, within one month or less, I was... Um, on the site of the Hendrik Verwoerd Dam, which is now the Harrop Dam, with uh, many other people. That was a very quick introduction into dams in South Africa. Can you detail your earliest experiences of working for Alfred McAlpine and Son between 1965 and 1969, and tell us about some of the dam construction projects that you were involved in? Yes, during that period with Alfred McAlpine, uh, four years, I um, was involved in nine different dam projects. My work was uh, securing contracts as a estimator, planner, and um, we were not successful, not, not, not during that period. In fact, it was when I, I joined LTA uh, after McAlpine's that I was much more deeply involved in dams. Can you tell us about the extent of your relationship with the well-respected South African civil engineer, Dr. Henry Olifier? What lessons did you take away from working closely with him? Yes, it was a, a close relationship. He joined the management of LTA as LTA and two European firms were building Kohorabasa. And I had to go to Kohorabasa to see the site myself, acquaint myself with a, a major project, as you might imagine. So after he left LTA management, he went and set up his own consultancy, Henry Olafia and Associates. And having met him many times, he asked me to associate with him on some of his ideas. They were conceptuals, a dam in the series, for instance. He had uh, put uh, South Africa in, into the forefront. He had been involved, as you may know, with Kariba and then Kahorabasa. Uh, and uh, I, um, I left uh, with all his ideas. We went together to see things. So it was a close relationship. From your experiences, what were some of the key challenges that went into the successful bidding of construction tenders for major dam projects in South Africa? The uh, process of producing a bid, especially one which is um, of many millions of rand, was a joint effort. I had a team helping me, but uh, dams in particular are almost the peak of civil engineering design and construction. A very high risk and the uh, work commenced with um, going to see the site, what we call a site inspection. So of all my dams, at least 30 or more dam sites, I went down to the river and up again, uh, considered how to get there. The logistics are tough. They're often in remote places. One had to create uh, access roads, create a, a camp, and all those activities then had to be transferred into a cost situation. So the dam might, might cost uh, all value of material and men and plant, and then the background, which can vary a lot depending on your approach to the site, literal, literally approach. Major roads had to go in, campsites. So it, it's a, an evolution with a time restraint. For instance, all tenders have to go in on a certain date, you have to abide by that. And uh, steps had to be taken for the management of the company 
taking into account the risks and what profit we hope to make and all the uh, background. <clears throat> we, we are in a business to, to make a profit for our shareholders. So the risks are both with the client and with the shareholders. And uh, that was the responsibility I had to take on. Why was the Lesotho Highlands Water Project so important in your construction career? And can you talk about how that experience led to an increase in opportunities to make use of your cost estimating expertise? Well, certainly with uh, Henry Oliver having uh, looked at the scheme with one or two other uh, senior engineers, Ninam Shand, in this country, I was seconded by my firm to join an international panel at the beginning, shortly after signing of the treaty between uh, the Kingdom of Lesotho and uh, South Africa. And having read the details of the contract that was entered in by the two countries, the first thing was to assess the, the cost, how much money had to be found from international banks. So I went down to uh, Lesotho, up in the mountains, with a man from Germany, an eminent engineer. We, we uh, discussed all the problems, we put it all together to our schedule, if you might say, of the dam construction, the tunnels, the roads, the accesses, and all other parts that go into it. So that um, eventually there's a sum of money which goes to places like the World Bank and gets, gets approval before the next step, which was to engage the engineers and designers. So from that early start, I, I was then involved with my company, LTA, to submit tenders for that work. We secured a very large portion of the tunnels that take water through from the Katsi Dam through to a town in South Africa called Clarence. Uh, it was a massive scheme. I had this kind of affinity towards the suited. And even today, I'm watching phase two. One of the people I associated with five times on dams in South Africa is now up in Bahotlang in Lesotho. And he is telling me how, how it's going today. I, I can't say uh, more than that about Lesotho, except uh, I was an international uh, cost assessor now working in, for others in other countries as well. You have worked on dam projects in Africa, Asia, and South America. Can you detail the significance of dam construction efforts in promoting a country's social, economic, and environmental vitality? I very soon found that water, water is life. And uh, these major dams in all these countries were either hydroelectric, as they were in South America, and those countries relied on the, the rivers that they had to use for hydro, which uplifted to local people. Even in the, one of those countries, they put up a large sign to say how much electricity they had. It meant so much to those, uh, uh, so we say, second-rate countries. In the South Africa, our dams are much more related to water supply. The... Um, country started off back in the early settlers' days with dams for Cape Town. The other dams in the, the Zimbabwe were irrigation, which of course gave opportunities for crops and uh, work opportunities. Finally, what would you like readers to take away from your book? The book is a, a, a summary of my work. It was because of my interest in in the dams, I had a logbook which uh, I put all my notes down. So I translated that logbook into a book which I reckon should be readable. I look at to whom it might go. Um, it has been put together by professional people. Already people are taking a greater interest in dam construction and the reason for it, both from an engineering and, as you mentioned, a social point of view. That was David Easton discussing his book titled A Good Damn Book.